What's up, Capoeira Nation? What's up, beautiful Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. For the second part of the interview with Mr. Fejadura. This, again, this interview was super, super fun. To I learned so much, man. I learned um, from his experience how how the difference of the capoeira so and and these go, are going to be the the points that we talk uh in this podcast okay so we talk about like the difference i asked him what is the difference in between the capoeira when he started and the capoeira today's days we talk about that difference we also talk about like how capoeira used to be so 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 aggressive at that time when he started and the difference to these days is not is not as aggressive uh in the sense of like you know when uh, when i started i personally uh, me uh kashishi this voice that you're listening right now <laughs> when i started in 2001 uh capoeira in venezuela was pretty aggressive it was very very aggressive um to be honest you you they were a couple Rivalities like a like a the old school of the two groups. I don't want to mention groups, but the two groups I started with uh, when I started with how you say when when I started in Capoeira, there were two groups. I think that, that let, let me break it down this way. And Capoeira was very aggressive back then. Okay, so we talk about that. We mentioned we go a little bit over that. And we we talk about how the difference in between these two capoeiras are very 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 different. How the the woman today's days because it's less aggressive. The woman presence in the capoeira community is stronger, which is really really dope. I think it's really cool. And we we also talk about how the the approach is so professional to these days about capoeira and people people are researching many ways to be to to approach uh, students to approach the, uh, a new audience in capoeira and and new practitioners to uh, acquire new practitioners into your school and how how that works and you know we are turning into a very professional generation and because was setting up this standard i feel like here to not too too far in the future this is going to be very very cool transition in between especially now that we zoom we have so much technology to these days to approach people to reach people and thanks to technology we can be more professional about the approach in capoeira and there's so much stuff we also talk about his researches and the research he mentioned few, uh, few, some of his research but we go a little bit more into the music into the re- when he was researching about music and how these during these years we've been lacking with his understanding and his research he kind of like got to the to the point of saying like you know in the capoeira community, yes, we we have many aspects, but there he he mentioned something really funny, and and I'm gonna let that uh, uh, I'm gonna let it there for you to find out what he says about we can be really good at everything, but we're uh, we are good at everything, but we're not, we're not excellent at one thing, so. Uh, and, and it can go two ways. It can be really good or it can be really bad. And, you know, listen to this, listen to his words, and listen it on a perspective with an open mind on on his his wisdom when what he shares in here. Because, you know, if you go to the website, again, I'm going to leave, leave all the links below, either on the YouTube channel, either uh, on the notes of the podcast for you to see his work and his his approach in the community and what i really like about these kind of works uh, about capoeiristas like him is he back up his words and his 
what he says here in the podcast with his actions. And, and again, um, it's going to sound a, bit, a, a little bit rough, but I, I believe in actions and I believe on what people do, not what people say. So if, you know, people talk too much about unity, but they are very selective in, the, in their unity. So it doesn't become a unity at all. It becomes a unity inside their circle. So it's, I think my personal perspective, and again, is my personal perspective. And I think when we talk about capoeira and unity, capoeira and unity and unified community, I'm not going to see logos. I'm not going to see people. I'm sorry. I'm going to see people. I'm not going to see logos. That's what I mean. I'm not going to see logos. I'm not going to see your capoeira style. I'm going to see the people behind that. Okay. So it's going to see, for me, it's about, again, it's about people, man. It's about people. And we have to unify people. And like I said, I said before, I saw this in the capoeira community where I grew up, where when we are all together, when we are unified, when we are the same people, when imagine if, if there's 10 schools in your city, each school have 20 people, different groups, right? Now, erase the groups and just leave the people, the do capoeira, right? Imagine that once per month, all those 20 people from all these different schools came together and made a huge hada. Just imagine this, 20 people per group, and there were, let's just say, 10 groups, right? Man, do you, do you imagine how amazing the hada would be? How much energy that would be? It would be beautiful, man, it would be awesome. That's what I'm talking about. That hada, that hada is where I want to see the Capoeira community today and the Capoeira community in the future. I don't care your group. I don't care where you come from. I don't care how you look like. If you do Capoeira and you respect people and you want to be around people and love people, let's make a huge Hada. Let's make the best Hada ever and let's come together for one single, one single, one single thing that we love. Capoeira. So listen to his words. Sorry for the really long intro. And I'm going to leave it here. Up to you. Listen to the Mr. Fejaduras podcast. It's going to be awesome. Let's roll, baby. Peace. So which which aspect of the of the Capoeira that you've seen before uh, back then when you started to to now? How, how do you see the, the difference? What so you you started in what, in what year again? Ninety one. Ninety one, and and from ninety one to now, how how do you see the capoeira community around the world, or where were you you? Traveling? Well, it's like the one one thing that it's it's very clear that it's capoeira has only improved. Then I'm talking about the the capoeira community itself, the games, the environment. It's we're living a golden era yeah. of, of capoeira. It's like there have never been, there has never been so many people teaching, living off capoeira, uh -huh. traveling around, making an economy, being able to uh, support the families with dignity, all through capoeira. That's uh, unheard of. When when I began, for example, the the guys that like uh, uh, nowadays have like groups and live off of where many of them had other jobs. They had uh, normal jobs in daytime and they teach at night. That's awesome. And many of them have made a, a career. And that all started in the 90s. Until the 90s, that very, very few people lived off Capoeira. Yeah. It was like, we could name them. And it was like a handful of people oh, yeah. who lived off Capoeira. Off Capoeira. Uh, and even less who had enough to support their families, who lived off Capoeira, but had enough to support their families, pay for, for basic expenses for their children. 
and yeah. have some um, social um, security. 100%. Yeah. And nowadays, you, you see that all around the world, people have succeeded. There is a, a professional approach to Capoeira. Yeah, 100%. And that's really, really good. So that's one aspect. The second aspect, it's about the game itself. Nowadays, we, we don't see people uh, um, like delivering soccer kicks in, in okay. other people's faces. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you don't see people uh, slamming people with their heads on the floor. Yeah, yeah. So you, you mean he's less aggressive as before? It's way less violent. Way less violent. There is like no comparison. Yeah, yeah. No comparison to to what it was in the in the uh, in the nineties when I started. That was the, the default default way of playing capoeira was fight. Yeah, yeah. Fighting was a, a structural yeah. part of the game. If you wanted to be respected as a capoeirista, you needed to be fighting. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, it, it doesn't even make any sense. Like yeah. most capoeiristas nowadays, uh, if they they start fighting, they in time in, in, in not very. Uh, in, in, it, it won't take long until people put them to the side. Hundred percent. Yeah, and you start. They fight all the time. They'll be like they'll be closing doors. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. they'll be yeah. cut out of most others, of most events. It's so Capoeira has um, got 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 better in this sense, and that also helped the um, uh, improvement of women. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. When inclusivity, when violence decreased, women participation went up, increased. And there is like so many more women playing good capoeira nowadays. Yeah, playing yeah. really well. Leading and schools too. Leading schools. Yeah, teaching yeah, and, beautiful. And, yeah, and playing capoeira uh, um, with men in in a in a non-violent way. Correct. That's yes. Like in the, in the in the beginning of the nineties, you did have women playing. But many times they needed to be fighting. Yeah. yeah. To be fighting other women or to be fighting other men. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, of it course, was more, more male and masculine uh, uh, dominance, right? Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. So that's that's another aspect that it's been like improved in Capoeira. It's got so much better as well. And also social recognition. All around Brazil, all around Brazil nowadays, uh, people tend to to respect capoeiristas as uh, socially acceptable people. Yeah, yeah. Which back then was like quite strange. Being a capoeirista, like full time capoeirista, would be something very weird. Okay. People would ask like, "What do you do?" I say, "I do capoeira." They go, like, uh, "Okay, but." What you did? What else? <laughs> yeah. What, what do you do for a living? What do you do yeah. to to make money? Uh, capoeira is just like a hobby thing. Yeah, yeah. And then nowadays it's like way more common. So oh, what you do? Like, I'm a capoeira teacher. Oh, nice. My my kid did capoeira in kindergarten. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, I know this guy. I trained when was in a in a in the gym. Yeah, it was a capoeira school. Yeah, yeah. I I've I've gotten some of those people. That they say like, oh yeah, you do capoeira, you teach capoeira. Oh, I did capoeira somewhere, well, like ten years ago or something like that. I think that these are, are the main differences. There is a, a, a one aspect like that uh, uh, could be seen as a, as a as a setback that it's uh, the time of the capoeira hype has been over for all, for more than a decade. Yeah, like there was this whole uh, only the strong and oh, okay. yeah, capoeira yeah. in the soap operas in Brazil and, and uh, Tekken, yeah. Eddie Gordo, and there was like the capoeira hype in Brazil yeah. and and all around the world from like ninety five to two thousand. Yeah, so that's 
uh, a time when there was a capoeira craze. Everyone was was doing it, and everyone knew what it was about. It was very trendy. Yeah. And then around the 2000s, it started to to decrease to a point where nowadays people might know what capoeira is, but most people don't have a clue. Yeah. Yeah. And even to these days, there, there's a lot of people in Hollywood that still do capoeira to keep in shape and to keep the, the agility. And, and there's actually a few capoeiristas that they, they do uh, some shows uh, for some like Netflix and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really cool. And what, what is, uh, what do you think it will be from your own perspective, the improvements that we can do in the capoeira community? We ourselves? Uh, yeah, here, here, uh, today's days for uh, today's days, Capoeira community that we can improve. Well, uh, I think that the first thing is, is to, to think globally. Yes. To, to get the mentality uh, more advanced, more, more progressive. In, uh, thinking more about how similar we are to each other and how we can work together and how we can build a small Capoeira communities that can interact and strengthen links. Yes. That's, that's uh, I think it's, it's the way forward you know, for yes. people. And that's uh, not, not an easy task because uh, it's very entrenched in Capoeira mentality. The, the um, backward idea that you belong to a certain group identity and you need to be group thinking yeah and you need to comply with whatever the group says uh and that also goes along with uh hierarchical um ambiguities yeah we have this this hierarchical uh, structures in capoeira which uh, are not made to be inclusive yeah on the yeah. contrary yeah they are made to be exclusive yeah there's like an exclusive exclusive section of capoeira where only the the, the enlightened ones will go in yeah uh, so we we have a, a challenge to change this mentality and you know, I like, see like it doesn't matter your rank. 100%. It, it matters just for, for, for the other. Yeah. Yeah. You now, if, if you play well and if you're a good uh, performer, then you're going to perform. But uh, it doesn't make you a better person or, or you shouldn't be more respected because you're better at Capoeira or you're a master in Capoeira or you're yeah. whatever. You don't, there's no reason for you to feel like you deserve more respect just because you have a badge. Yeah, 100%. Or graduation or, or yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's, it's just people need respect just because they're people. And, and you know, it's, it's again, it's, it's about people. It's, and I think we, we just, like, if we, if we set that respect, that, that would be... They definitely capoeira can can improve in other aspects though of like especially the social as aspect yeah yeah and uh i see in the background that you have uh some some music and you also mentioned that you have uh music and your on uh, one of your courses uh is wait is it one of the courses oh yeah 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 the uh how how do you find the in the interest on the capoeira music what is your your thoughts about that well, in, a, in my personal journey, I needed to uh, learn more. I needed to acknowledge that there were a lot of things that I didn't know Yeah. because it wasn't easy for me. Uh, music wasn't something that I just picked out of the blue. There, there was uh, so much I could learn. I could learn by practicing on my own and by... Um, by spending time and energy trying to, to repeat 
technically exercises and drills and, and um, rhythms that I saw other people perform and try to learn that way. Yeah. That I got to, to a threshold and to um, go over this threshold, I needed to go to a music school and to study for real. Cool. Uh, it was a very humbling experience because uh, I was already teaching capoeira and teaching capoeira music, of course, for, I don't know, um, over 20 years, maybe. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I, I enrolled in a music school about, yeah, about 10 years ago. So, yeah, I had 20 years experience. That's pretty cool. And wasn't so young either to start learning sort of from scratch. It's not from scratch because you have a couple of background and you know how to play and, and, it, and you develop a way of understanding music. Yeah. If, if you're a capoeirista who is um, looking into getting better at that specific realm. But uh, I needed to go back to, to the basics, you know, and understand what, what aspects of uh, music, capoeira music specifically, uh, were um, a failure, failure for myself, where I was failing, yeah. which were my weak points. And then over time, it's it, uh, understanding the, like where, where my weak points were. And, and I, did a, like, I did research like that into many things, into martial arts, dancing, acrobatics, oh. theater. Yeah. Music was just one of these researches. Uh, when, I, when I finally understood which were the main capoeira aspects that uh, most capoeiristas did, didn't master, music was there was always that it still is like yeah. most capoeira people even the good ones don't really master basic aspects of music yeah they yeah. lack we as a community we lack understand basic understanding of what we're doing uh when we talk about basic understanding i'm, I'm talking about literally the base to if, if you if you understand the basic we maybe we were doing the bass yeah but we don't understand it yeah well yeah. which one were we like 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 three keys to to find out those basics from music for example people uh will be playing a rhythm and some people will be crossing that's very very common okay people are crossing the rhythm neither the people who were playing right, or who are playing in the pattern, yeah, perceive what the others are doing. Okay. Nor they know how to correct it. Okay. Uh, that's uh, one issue, and another issue is uh, people, even advanced capoeiristas, singing out of tune, singing okay. completely off key. And when they start singing, they don't even realize. They have no idea what a key is. Okay. They don't know what is singing in tune. Okay. And then it becomes a new pattern to be singing off key. Off key becomes normal. And historically, it is not normal. Yeah. If you, go, if you look at the recordings, old recordings, I'm talking about recordings from the 40s to the 70s. So you get... Cabecinha, bimba, traíra, Valdemar, Caissara, Pastinha, all, all those guys. And you, you listen to their recordings. You go like, okay, or, or even more modern ones. Like, uh, let's talk about Tony Vargas, Suassuna, Boa Voz, guys who are more like modern. Or even the, the, our uh, current great singers like Rafael, Pernalonga, yes. uh, or, you know, there's like a number of guys from many different groups. All these guys singing in, in, uh, in tune, you know, they're, they're always singing in the key and in tune. 
So you, you start realizing that there is something to music which relates to very basic relations for uh, any musician who starts playing the guitar, for example. So you play the guitar and let's say you, you're playing uh, a specific chord. Yeah. Let's name it. Let's say C. You're playing in a C chord. Yeah. You're going to sing in C. If you're playing in that, that if the, the C chord it's your tone of reference, you're going to sing in C. If you don't sing in C, it's going to sound really bad. Period. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's okay. completely off. So people in the Hoda many times are singing in four different keys all together. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds horrible. Yes, yes. It sounds really bad. And then they relate a chef yeah. with shouting. Yes. So a, a shed becomes a synonym of volume. Yeah, yeah. And they Instead sing the... even louder and louder and stronger and stronger. And just like there is this huge shouting of bad music <laughs> played together. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's sometimes it's fun and people feel good. Like yeah. I've been to many hotels where the music was terrible, but the hotel was great. Nice. Because the, the people were great. Yeah, yeah. But you can't stop thinking that the harder probably would be even greater if great people were making great music. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, when everybody so this sing- is something. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When everybody sings, that you feel the energy, and it is is like you're right. It's, it feels completely different. Yeah. It's just a matter of, of uh, understanding that we, Kapura, modern Kapura people, we did not have the same musical um, background as these guys that I just uh, cited. Yeah. Uh, those guys, uh, let's, let's talk about Master Bimba, it's a huge reference. The guy was uh, playing in the African Brazilian religion it was a a, a drama in in, in a singer in an african brazilian religion he was a, a samba yeah. player he was a capoeira master so the guy was in, deeply involved yeah. with music yeah he was a fighter too right he was also a fighter yeah 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 so he he, he he told many aspects yeah definitely definitely That's awesome. but, oh, well, what I'm uh, pointing out here is that it's a guy who grew up in a musical environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and became very good. Yeah. He became very good at music. And uh, we nowadays, we don't live in the same kind of musical environments. We don't produce our own music. We only consume other people's music. 100%. And we start up, we are at 20, 25 15, 30, without any musical background at all. And then all of a sudden you become a capoeira teacher, but your musical skills have not improved just because you got a, a, a higher belt. Yeah. We need, to, we need to, to acknowledge that there are stuff that we don't know and we need to study. We need to, to um, make up for the time that we lost in, in our childhood, not being in, in a musical environment, making our own music. Yes. Yes. No, I agree. Because sometimes we, it's the same, like uh, I mentioned this before, uh, where we, because we get an, uh, as longer or as longer we are in Capoeira and uh, especially us that we want to teach, uh, uh, we should understand how to play birimba, how to play the instruments, and and it hurts me so much when I see a teacher without knowing how to play a, a, a birimba. It's like how how does that work? Is is a discrepancy, discrepancy, or how, how are you say? It? It's not it's not sync with with teaching. How 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 are you able to teach other people what you don't have? You know, and and is is doesn't make sense to me how how a teacher can be a teacher without playing instrument 
I understand the part of uh, uh, wanting to teach, which is really cool, Want, wanting to teach the, the movements. But the essential part of capoeira, which is the hada, how how does it play? You know, how how does it work? That's a, that's a modern concern. If you if you go historically backwards, there are a lot of capoeira ma masters who didn't master the instrument. Okay. Who couldn't okay. play rimba, who couldn't sing well. That's yeah. uh what, what you're talking about, it's it's a very specific need for current capoeira teachers to make a living. So okay. if, if you are going to make a living of capoeira, you, you need to have the tools. So yeah, a capoeira yeah. teacher nowadays is someone who doesn't just play capoeira, uh, fights in the, in, the, in the sense of capoeira, it's also uh, got aspects of martial arts. Uh, it's someone who does acrobatics because you, you need to do shows at some point of your life and acrobatics play a, a huge role in it. Uh, you, you need to be able to make music, to sing, play an instrument, which is uh, uh, another language. Music is another language. You need to master For sure. For sure. another language. And apart from that all, you, you also need to dance samba and be able to play samba instruments, batucada instruments, and perform makulele, yeah, and, and all the stuff that will be useful for shows. You, you need to be good with people, you know, a sort of psychologist as well, to, to have your students motivated to train and so on. There are so many different aspects to, to a capoeira teacher nowadays yeah. that were just not part of uh, of of the concerns that people had 30 or 40, 50 years ago when capoeira was not a, a profession in, in itself. And yeah. you could just you could be a master and, and come to a roda and just play capoeira, and you could be teaching and your students who would learn how to play instruments because there were other people who played. Yeah. And I know many masters like this who they couldn't play <laughs> their, their students were good. Yeah. Because they were interacting in an environment. Yeah. So it's a, uh, uh, I, 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 would, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't make this uh, assumption that all capoeira masters play good music, all capoeira teachers play good music, and that's a requirement for a capoeira teacher. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, even I myself in the in the in the Brincadeira de Angola course, the online course, uh, I acknowledge the need of uh, today's teachers, the need of today's teachers to master basic skills. In, in these instruments for sure because it's part of what you, you you need to have to apply capoeira as as a, as a comprehensive uh tool educational tool yeah you know, to to get uh to the full potentials of capoeira you need to master the music so one one of the last uh assets in the in the course is for people to record a video of themselves oh, cool. playing all the instruments and singing different songs. Nice. Okay. So that's you. You need that if you want to teach nowadays, especially children. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and you don't master basic aspects of birimba, bandeiro, drumming. It's it's it will be hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's very, very wide uh, information that that we can we can access to. I mean, it, there's so many uh, uh, ways to learn still, and and to learn, you know, you, there's so many tutorials on YouTube of people teaching uh, all these instruments, and um, you know, like we mentioned before, the the internet give us access now to to learn many stuff, even music, even music. Uh, uh, now with your course. 
uh, learning how to teach kids and, and, and adults and is, is the information is there. Now it's up to us get get access to this information. Absolutely. Yeah. And and to to wrap it up, um what would be a, a, a your personal advice to the Capoeira community? Just like normal um um well you mean now in the, 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 the coronavirus uh situation or, or in general? Just in general, yeah. Okay. Well, in general, I would just keep it with my, my, my speech. Like, unite. Nice. Just, we need unity. It's like we, we are not unifying all ideas and people don't need to, to behave the same and to think the same way. But if we acknowledge what we have in common, everyone will benefit. Everyone will, will benefit from understanding that we have the same feelings, the same needs, the same challenges, and, and people will understand that once they start hanging out together and saying how they can improve the environment and people around themselves when they unite, when they start doing things together, then that will help a lot. That's, uh, yeah, I'll just stay with that. Nice, nice. I, I agree. I agree because, uh, again, in co coming back to what we said before, it's, it's about people and, and they, they, together we are the beneficial it would be for, for Capoeira and for everybody to, to be part of the Capoeira community, which is beautiful. Capoeira is, is, is just such a, a complex and beautiful uh, art, and, and it's just so much to, to learn and never ending learning process. <laughs> Well, That's the way, my friend. Yes, yes. Thank Very you. Very so nice much. talking to you. Yes, thank you so much, Mesri. Thank you so much for for be part of the podcast. You know, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. I think it was amazing, and I hope I really, really hope uh, we get some people enrolled on your course, and we'll talk soon. Definitely, mate. Looking awesome. forward. Yes, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for getting this far. Remember, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook or YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is going to help us and help me to get bigger numbers and bigger subscribers so we can give more information, okay? Please, if you're listening, I know you're listening. I know you're watching. Please give me a subscribe. Give me a, give, give me a like, okay? I know you're watching right here for listening all right have an amazing day thank you so much for tuning in and listening every single episode especially the episode we just did all right thank you so much peace